Next, let's look at the details in the parent element from line 5 to line 10. By adding line 5 to line 10, our palm now has a parent palm from the artifact Spring Boot Starter Parent. And we do so by specifying the fully qualified artifact name of the parent palm. With this setup, our project can now inherit some of the elements of the parent palm. The Spring Boot Starter Parent is a special starter project provided by the Spring Boot team. It provides common and sensible defaults for Spring Boot applications and a complete dependency list to quickly build our Spring Boot project. Let's click into this parent artifact. Press Command. And we'll move the cursor over. As you can see, Maven has already downloaded this artifact to my Maven local repository. Let's click it. So this opens the palm file of this special Spring Boot starter parent artifact provided by the Spring Boot team. Our palm is inheriting it. Let's take a look at this palm. As you can see, this palm also has a parent palm called Spring Boot Dependencies. We will look at that later. I want to point out that, just like inheritance in object-oriented programming, this parent palm is not aware of any child palm that inherits it. So our palm knows this parent palm, but not vice versa. As usual, this palm has artifact ID, name, description. The packaging type is palm. This indicates that the primary artifact of this project is not a jar or war. In other words, not executable. The primary artifact of this project is just the palm.xml itself. What about the group ID? Well, it is not here. If the group ID is missing, it will be the same as the parent. Every Maven project has a packaging type. You may ask, we didn't see one in our palm. That is, this one. In here, there is no packaging element. Well, if it is not specified in the palm, then the default value jar will be used. So the packaging of our project is jar. Let's go back to the parent palm. This parent palm defines several default properties which a child palm can override. For example, java.version. And in this case, the child palm is using the same value, 17. Under Resources, the palm defines where to find the project's external configuration files, also known as the property files, and defines the accepted property file names. From here, we know that the property files can be found under src main resources. The accepted property file name must start with application. The asterisk here is a wildcard. For example, application-dev is a good name. application-prod is a good name. The file extension is either yml or yaml or Properties. In this project, we're using dot properties right here. This is the name 
of our property file, application.properties. It is okay to rename it to, for example, dash dev. Let me undo the change. In the Hogwarts Artifacts Online project, we will use the YAML extension, the YAML file. The filtering is true. For more information about this filtering element, take a look at the documentation of the Apache Maven resources plugin. All you need to know at this moment is that you must name your property files using this naming convention. Start with application, then some text, and use one of the three extensions, either YML or YAML or properties. When the Spring Boot project is compiled by Maven, Maven will look for those property files under SRC main resources, process them, for example, interpolate variables used in the property files, and then copy them to the target folder. Right here. In our case, Maven just copied the application properties file under SRC Maven resources into target classes. It is here and it's empty. This palm also provides default configuration for various Maven plugins. Such as Spring Boot Maven plugin, Maven Compiler plugin, Maven Fail Safe plugin, Maven Jar plugin, and so on. Next, let's come back and look at the parent palm of the Spring Boot starter parent. Spring Boot Dependencies. Command and click it. The only important thing you need to know is that the Spring Boot starter parent, POM, inherits a dependency management element from the Spring Boot Dependencies. Let's take a look at this dependency management element. Here defines the versions of many third-party libraries that Spring Boot supports. There are a lot of them. This dependency management element defines a very long list of dependencies supported by Spring Boot. So let me collapse dependency management. As you can see from line 206 to line 2321, that's the content in dependency management. There are hundreds of dependencies. It turns out that each release of Spring Boot provides a curated list of dependencies that it supports. As I said before, you do not need to provide a version for any of these dependencies in your build configuration as Spring Boot manages that for you. When you upgrade Spring Boot itself, for example, from Spring Boot 2.7 to Spring Boot 3.0, these dependencies are upgraded as well in a consistent way. But you can still specify a version and override Spring Boot's defaults if you need to do so. This curated list contains all the Spring modules that you can use with Spring Boot as well as a refined list of third-party libraries. The list is available as a standard bills of materials. So let's come back to our palm. As you can see, now, thanks to the dependency management element, you can omit version tags for blast dependencies in your palm.xml. Let's go back here. 
We'll go over this list. You may wonder, wow, there are hundreds of dependencies. Does my project download all the dependencies in this curated list? No. Think of the dependency management as a menu in a restaurant. It lists the latest dishes that the restaurant can cook, but you don't have to order all of them. If you want to use a dependency, for example, we want to use Elasticsearch Java. Just copy the coordinate with the open and close dependency tags. Copy and paste it into your palm under dependencies. So right now there are three. Let's go to the last one, but make sure it is still within dependencies element. Paste. Remember, you do not need a version. Maven will download jar files based on the version specified for starter parent in the parent tag. Then we got a problem. Let's move the cursor over. It says dependency Elasticsearch-Java not found. What should we do? This means Maven cannot find this artifact from our Maven local repository. We need to hit refresh to trigger Maven pulling this artifact from the Maven central repository. Click. As you can see, that Maven is resolving dependency. Now the arrow is gone. Let's take a look at the current Maven dependency tree. Click Maven, opens panel. As you can see, now we have a fourth dependency, Elasticsearch. Maven downloads this artifact, and more importantly, it downloads the artifacts that this artifact depends on. One, two, three, four and keep going. So Maven actually downloads all those dependencies for us. As you can see, even though we didn't specify the version number for Elasticsearch Java, Spring Boot still downloads the correct version. How? So let's go back to Spring Boot dependencies and search this variable. Ah, it's here. It is defined under the properties element in Spring Boot dependencies. It is the correct version, 8.5.3. Now let's go back to our palm. What if I want to delete one dependency? For example, I no longer want Elasticsearch Java. It's very simple. Just delete the four lines. Save. And refresh Maven to reload all the dependencies. Now it's gone. We only have three dependencies. OK. Let's go back to Spring Boot dependencies. Now, let me show you some very important dependencies. Let's scroll all the way down. The highlight of Spring Boot is its starter dependencies and auto configuration. They help save a lot of time. For example, if we're building a web project, we can just add, let's find it. We can just add 
Spring Boot Starter Web directly. A starter bundles all the required dependencies with the correct versions. For example, the Spring Boot Starter Web includes the Spring Core, Spring MVC, Logging, an embedded Tomcat server, and Jackson. All in one and is all too configured for you. It is out of the box. To change the value of any property defined in the starter parent or in dependencies, we can redeclare that in our own POM in the properties element. The default version defined in Spring Boot starter parent is 17, and we're using 17 in our own POM. In summary, in order to use Spring Boot, you must have line 5 to line 10 in the POM.xml. You do not have to manually type them in POM. When you create a Spring Boot project from IntelliJ, the parent POM is already there. Our POM is inheriting Spring Boot Starter Parent POM, Spring Boot Starter Parent POM, which further inherits Spring Boot dependencies. I hope now you have a good understanding of the POM of a Spring Boot project.